Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Cassie Johnson and my channel is all about how I was able to start a side hustle in 2020 selling on Etsy and have now been able to quit my full-time job and am now a full-time entrepreneur looking to help others do the same. So if you didn't see my last video where I went over how I sold my first $500,000 on Etsy, then I'll link that video down below so you can check that out as well. And so I wanted to do this video. So if you are just starting your Etsy shop for the first time, or if you're not seeing the success in yours that you'd like to see, these are my top 10 tips that I would do differently if I was starting right now in 2022 and how you can have success as well. So my very first tip is going to be always running a sale in your store. So in my store, I actually always run a 20% off sale. So this doesn't mean that you should make 20% less profit. What this means is that you'll raise your prices by 20%. So let's say I wanna sell my t-shirts for $24.99. What I would do is I would list it for sale for $30.99, and then I turn on a sale for 20% off. So then it's a $25 t-shirt. It's going to tell the customer that it's on sale when you're in just the search results along with everybody else. But there's a couple of other benefits. And uh, unfortunately in the print on demand world and Etsy in general, there's a lot of people out there that just copy exactly. And that's what we wanna try and avoid is keep those stalkers away from your listings. And so when you do have that bestseller badge, when you have it on sale in the search results, it actually hides it. So not that that's gonna keep the stalkers away completely, but it does help hide that, uh, but you still show up at the top of the search results. And then also when you are looking through your own Etsy shop at all of your listings, when they're on sale, you have to actually click on each individual one to see how many are in the cart. Whereas if it's not on sale, you can actually scroll through someone's shop and see, oh, this one has seven in the cart, this one has 20 in the cart, this one has 12 in the cart, and you could kind of go through and really see why someone's successful in every niche that they are. And so for those reasons, I always run a sale just to try and keep the stalkers away. Tip number two is going to be make as many listings as you can. Etsy really rewards people who make multiple listings a day. So if you can post at least every single day, that will be a great start if that's all you have time for. But if you've got a little bit more time on your hands, I really would try to just do, especially in the beginning, as many listings as you can. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't spend an hour on a design. Really the simple design sell. So just find what's selling, get some new items put up there for sale, and move on. Focus on what's gonna make you the most money in the beginning, which is going to be getting those listings up there. That way you can see what design styles sell well and get more of those listed so you can be more successful in the future. For tip number three, it would be not to offer too many options to your customer. So what I like to do is I actually do offer multiple colors, but I only do three. So let's say I'm doing a sweatshirt, I would sell it in maybe black, white, and gray. And I would post it with all three. And then I would actually copy that listing in Etsy and then change the profile photo. So let's say maybe your first listing had black as the main photo, you copy it, change the main photo to white, copy it again, change the main photo to gray. So now you have three different listings all with the same SEO or you can change the title and the tags a little bit to kind of go to different markets. You just have more chances to be found, but if you offer 10 different color options, sometimes people can get you know decision paralysis and end up not making a decision. For tip number four, it would be to get good reviews. If you don't have a lot of sales or a lot of reviews, sometimes that can turn off some customers or make them wary of buying. So when you do get those sales, you go ask them for a review after their item's delivered. So you'd go into your delivered items, you'd go to the side and actually sort by delivered. 
and so you can find only the items that have already been delivered to someone's home and then I'd send them a quick message saying you know hey we're a new shop on Etsy we'd really love to hear your feedback you know we hope everything came great with your item if you loved it we'd love to see uh, you leave us some feedback on our shop and then you'd actually tell them how to leave a review and then you can even say you know we'd love for you to include a photo that way we can use them in our listings in the future so I've had a very very high amount of success with sending people these more personalized messages with their name I'll say like hello so-and-so and then I've gotten about 25% of people will leave reviews overall, which is a really, really high percentage of reviews. But let's say you get a four star review and they don't say anything. You wanna go ahead and message them and say, you know, thank you so much for taking the time to leave us a review. We just wanted to check in since you left only four stars to make sure that nothing was wrong with the item. If there is anything wrong, please send us a photo. We're happy to make it right sometimes you know things do go wrong so if there is anything wrong with the shirt the stitching's coming out there's a hole in it the print just doesn't quite look right a hair was printed under the ink they'll actually replace it for you so if you get that picture from the customer go to that order on Printify and click submit issue they'll actually send them a free one as a replacement or give you a refund depending on what the customer wants and then same with worse reviews. You know, if you get a one star, two star, three star, so on. If you get a bad review on something, always message them and see if you can resolve the issue first. And then let's say there was a print issue. You could go ahead and send them a replacement and then you wanna make sure to watch that. And after the replacement's delivered, go ahead and reach out and ask them how it came and make sure everything's okay. And if they say the shirt's so much better, thank you so much that's your cue to say you know i really appreciate you being so patient with us you know we'd really love for you to update your review if you wouldn't mind to say that you know you had this issue but that we fixed it and not ask them to give you a better review but just update it that you have taken care of the problem and a lot of times they'll just change it to a five-star review and say great customer service had an issue but they took care of it sometimes you can't fix it so your last resort is going to be replying publicly to that review once you do this the person cannot change it so that's why I'm saying your last resort you can't get in touch with them they're not replying they don't want to change it reply to the message that way people in the future know what the problem might have been so tip number five is going to be run ads on what is already working if you have some items that are selling really well that can be a good time to run some Etsy ads you know start with five or ten dollars a day on just a few listings or if you've got you know 20 listings that are selling really well you know you could go up to thirty dollars a day just to really boost those and get even more sales and this can really catapult your business into growing even more because you know people like the designs you know people are searching for what you have for sale and so this can get you just even more sales and more best sellers something to try if you're already finding some success but you want to just bring it to that next level tip number six is to find design styles that work for you and then duplicate it into every niche so just for an example let's say you buy a really cute graphic of a rainbow and a really nice cursive underneath and you start selling that in a certain niche and it starts selling really well then you know people like that aesthetic they like that style so go ahead and recycle that for different niches that you try you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you go to design and this will really speed up your process and speed up your business tip number seven is actually kind of goes along with number six once you've gotten a few different design styles that you really like that sell well you want to start offering those as their own custom order listing because if you have people reaching out saying you know i really love this design that you have but you can you have it say this instead it's really nice to have a pre-made listing that just says your custom text here because then you just send them that listing they purchase it and then you make them a proof because I know before I started doing this, I would end up working on custom orders for people. I'd send them examples and then they'd never buy. So now I only do custom orders if they purchase it first 
and then I have in the notes that I'll send them a proof of it before I print it for them to approve. So tip number eight is going to be one of the biggest tips that I can give you to help grow your business in 2022, and that is to sell group listings. So I mean, you know, group teacher shirts, bachelorette shirts, birthday party shirts, anything along those lines. If you're making a new shirt, like I said, instead of a, you know, a teacher shirt, make a teacher squad shirt and put it on a mock-up with six different shirts on it. You know, if you're making a funny shirt, maybe make it best friend matching shirts. If you're making a funny baby shirt, maybe make it a funny baby shirt with a funny dad shirt. And then this is going to get that individual listing more sales, so you're more likely to get a bestseller badge, and then you're going to get more, more profit because you get a discount on the shipping when someone buys multiple items from the same provider. So that is such a hot tip. Honestly, if you did nothing else on this list, sell as many group listings as you can in 2022. Tip number nine, almost to the end here, so thanks for sticking with me so far, and that is to sell sweatshirts. A lot of people focus solely on t-shirts, but in 2021, of the 13,067 items that I sold in 2021, 6,346 of them were sweatshirts, while only 5,172 of them were t-shirts. So that is just a huge difference, you know, over a thousand more in the sweatshirts category, which I was honestly kind of surprised by. So when you are making listings, make sweatshirts and t-shirts. Um, it's, it's definitely worth it to have both. The last one, tip number 10, is going to be to start your social media in 2022. This can really help boost you because Etsy loves to see stores bringing their own traffic to the platform and they'll really start to boost those listings. I would open up a Pinterest account download the Pinterest Chrome extension, and then when you're actually on your own Etsy shop looking at your listings, click into each listing as you list them for the first time and go ahead and pin it to a board. You can do more with Pinterest later, but the bare minimum, every time you make a listing, post it to Pinterest. And then there is Instagram, same kind of thing. Go ahead and just open up an Instagram account and just post one of your designs with a couple hashtags. You don't have to do Instagram every single day or for every design that you make, but try and set some kind of schedule. Maybe post something on Instagram once a week. I can't tell you how many people have posted on Instagram and then linked my Instagram. And then I'll get some traffic for people in my Etsy shop because they liked what their friend was wearing. And then lastly, definitely one to consider would be TikTok. There's so many people finding success for their small business on TikTok. You could do this by buying a few samples of items with your shirts and you know posting a video with it and linking it in the comments. Or you could even do a work with me and show your small business, you know, videotaping from above of you making one of your designs. And then lastly, lastly, uh, there's always Facebook groups. I have partnered up with Facebook groups before where you can post some of your items in a specific niche Facebook group and actually get some sales from that as well. So if you're really in any particular specific niches, go ahead and see if there's Facebook groups for it. Join it and see if there's rules on being able to post things for sale and go ahead and post and that can help you get some more sales in 2022. So that is it for my top 10 tips for starting your Etsy shop and finding success in 2022. Comment down below what your favorite tip was or what you're most excited to try. I appreciate you staying all the way until the end and we'll see you next time. Thank you.